गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग Good evening, all of you. We'll just start class in two minutes. Okay, just give me two minutes. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, all of y'all. Um, I want all of y'all to turn your cameras on. And above any lecture. Okay. 
Can you both put your camera on and let's go also? Anubhav. Anubhav, can you hear me? Anubhav, you just wish me good morning. Like, you just wish me, right? So I know you're there. So just please turn your camera on. I may have network problem. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, I guess we have a new student. Hi, Lashita. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. This is your uh, first class with me, right? Okay, so uh, have they like started the classes for you at school? Have they started classes for you at school? No, ma'am. Okay, all right. So, so far we have completed almost like two lessons, uh, Lashita. Uh, what you can do is uh, to cover up that, you can just go through my lectures. Okay, and uh, the lectures will make you understand. And also, um, there are a few tests, maybe. Uh, you can just attend those tests. But you have been locked by now, but I guess your question paper will be like available. So you can go through the lectures. And also, after every uh, lesson, I'll upload my notes, my resources notes. Uh, I'll just upload it in the Wise app. So you can refer that also. And during class, I don't want any of you to take notes. After I finish like a topic, I'll give you time to write, okay? At that time, you can write and ask me notes. That's how the session works, all right. And uh, also after the teaching hours also, if you have any doubt, you can feel free to like text me on WhatsApp. So you can just save my number on WhatsApp. All right, and I will be giving homework for every class, which you have to write it in your notebook and send me a picture of it. Okay, and in case you're not able to write, I want you to give me a proper explanation. And then, yeah, I'm not, and I don't scold you for anything, okay? So I'm not just scolding type at all, okay? So if there's anything, you can feel free to like tell me. All right? All right, guys. Uh, so I've already uh, given test for all of you all. You can mute yourself here. Okay, so I've given uh, a test for all of you all. So um, before telling who is first, second, and third, let us just first discuss all the answers. So, um, uh, since Leshita wasn't there in our class, other than her, I want all of you to answer. So, the order will be Anubhav, Krithvik, Varshit. That'll how the order will go, okay? So, I want you to please answer the question one by one on a mask. Okay, can we start? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um... Just a minute, Okay, starting with the question. The digestive tract and the associated glands together constitute the dash. The digestive tract and the associated glands together constitute the dash. And above. Ma'am, I think digestive system. Okay, all right, very good. So this is the digestive system. The digestive system constitutes the tract and the glands, okay. Next question. Okay, ma'am. What is ingestion? Kritwek, what is ingestion? Mom, it's taking in food into our body. Very good. So it's basically taking in a food into your body. And the third question. The first set of teeth is called as milk teeth, temporary teeth, both A and B, or permanent teeth. Ma'am, milk teeth, ma'am. Milk teeth, okay. Anubhav, is uh, Varshit's answer correct? Ma'am, I think it will be both A and B. Exactly, it will be both A and B. Okay, Varshit, because milk teeth is also known as temporary teeth. What is the meaning of milk teeth? It means it will be there only for some period of time. Ma'am, 
What is temporary teeth? The same. It will be only for some period of time, and then only it will fall off and grow into a permanent teeth. So the answer is both A and B. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, Anubhav, an adult human has how many teeth? Ma'am, an adult human has uh, thirty-two teeth. Okay, it's actually thirty-two only, but ah, uh, it's incorrect for you because I've already mentioned for the last exercise. Don't give me sentence type answers. Just write the answer alone. If you give me sentence type answers, then your mark will be deducted. Okay, so you have written there are thirty-two. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So thirty-two is the correct answer, but I'll just give you a score for that. So that's fine. Next, ah, uh, next person. Cellulose in the plant food can be digested by pigeons, oh. cats, cows, or bears. Mama, cows. Cows, very good. Because cows are. Because cows are. Oh. Uh. Start with R. Um. Cows are called. Um, cows are. Uh. Mm. Starts with R. Harshit, mm. try. Harshit. Man. Um. Ruminants. Ruminants. Very good. So cows are ruminants, so they can easily digest cellulose. All right. Ah, uh, next. Humans cannot digest cellulose like cattle. Why? Why, Varshit? Is it because they have a smaller stomach, or is it because they do not have the bacteria to digest cellulose in the stomach, or is it because they do not consume cellulose, or is it because they have less digesting capacity than ruminants? Ma'am, I think they do not have bacteria. Very good. It's because they do not have a bacteria. That is present as similar to that of the ruminants. Okay, all right. Um, next question for the next person: the teeth that is placed at the end of the buccal cavity and it helps in the chewing of the food is called dash. Then premolar. Premolar. Okay. Krithvik, is his answer correct? Ma'am, is it molar? It's molar. Okay, because only molar is at the end. Because after the molar only comes the premolar, so it's not basically the end. Okay, the end most is the molar. All right, on above. Okay, uh, because I know both the functions are same, but the location matters. All right. Next question, ah, uh, for Krithvik, human beings have how many sets of teeth in their lifetime? Um, mm. mama, two sets of teeth. Two sets of teeth. Where Anubhav has written four sets of teeth. How is it four sets, Anubhav? Can you tell me? Ma'am, I think that its answer will be incisor, canines, molars, and premolars. Ah, that so is types of teeth. There's a difference. Okay, that is called types. These are called sets. Okay, so what are the two sets uh, of teeth? Ma'am, ma'am, milk teeth and permanent teeth. Very good. Okay. Ah, uh, Varshit. Fat is completely digested in the dash, the intestine, stomach, mouth, or food pipe. No, intestine. Intestine, very good. Because those two are the regions where full water, nutrients, everything are absorbed, both in small and large intestine. All right. Ah, uh, next question. The food passes through a continuous canal, which begins at the buccal cavity and it ends at the. Mam anus, anus, very good. Because where you know very well where the elementary canal starts and ends. Next question: the rearing of silkworm to gather silk is known as dash. Mam, mam cocoon. Cocoon. I'll just give you the options. Ah, uh, the next person can answer. Okay, pisciculture, horticulture, cocoon, sericulture. Can you repeat the options, ma'am? Pisciculture, horticulture, cocoon, sericulture. Ma'am, I think option D, ma'am. Option D, which is sericulture. Yes, ma'am. Then why didn't you click that option? What, ma'am? <laughs> Then why didn't you click that option? Everybody has put cocoon. 
it's not cocoon i've already showed you the video also like different different videos i showed you in all the videos they clearly told it's sericulture sericulture is the answer so please note it down in your notebook all right the video is not only for entertainment purpose it's also for taking notes all right because while video is going on i won't i won't pause the video for you to write the notes i wish you continuously write the notes while listening to the video at the same time all right so sericulture is the answer because cocoon what is cocoon cocoon is one of the stage of the silkworm it is not the rearing of silkworm that is not the process is name it's like it's like you telling cocoon uh, like what do you say if i'm asking you what is the process of removing the seeds from the cotton and combing it what is the name of it any of you on this answer removing of seeds and combing of the cotton is called what ma'am ginning ginning okay that is how you should answer if i give you option ginning cotton ball if the new ship you click cotton ball is it correct wrong right like that only your answer is you have click cocoon okay sericulture will be the answer please note it down and don't forget it okay uh next question for anubhav what leaf is fed to the silkworm to obtain silk ma'am uh, is it mulberry leaves very good mulberry leaves uh next question example of animal fiber is cotton wool jute or nylon prithvi ma'am um uh, ma'am wool wool very good you get it from the sheep goat and everything which is an animal next question the flap that prevents food from entering larynx is called no epidermis epidermis or epiglottis epiglottis very good uh next person the legs of the amoeba are called as mam pseudopodia pseudopodia very good last question the small intestine is how many meters long mam no in 7.5 7.5 excellent okay so uh since uh, one of the typing i think it's one of the typing errors of uh, and above so he will be scored uh just uh, note your score okay whenever i'm calling your names and above your score is 13 out of uh, 16 which is very good okay 13 out of 16 note it down okay ma'am twick what are you got wrong the register okay uh go to and give you the milk and okay um वर्ष Everybody, first question. I've written elementary. Can only why? Why? What happened? When a country wrote elementary, can I even worship to the elementary? Can only Anubhav wrote digestive system. Milk mm, teeth. She has one, two. even varshit you have also got 12 okay very good all of you all the first rank goes to anubhav and the second rank goes to kritvik and varshit okay i want you to guys to do better and also varshit i'm just giving you one score because you have written false feet for amoeba which is also right but try to use more of scientific terms okay 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 very good class now checking of the homework starting with the uh, worship homework explain the life cycle of silk worm in the first stage the mother moth lays eggs and then the caterpillar or larva hatches from the eggs and then the larva feeds on mulberry leaves and uh, it gives rise to rise to Rise to what is that? 
Ma'am, go ma'am. It's pupa. Yeah, so change it. P U P A. In the pupa stage, the leaves is needed around by the silkworm to hold itself up. That it swings its head, spinning uh, a fiber made of protein and becomes a silk fiber. Then it makes a hole and flies out as an adult moth. Okay, very good. Just change the spelling alone. Name two synthetic fibers. Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, how is cotton? Mm -hmm. When cotton grows one meter height, the plant grows um, into cream colored flowers. Often the flowers are poly a pollinated shoot grows and also known as cotton balls. After this, the cotton is picked and the cotton seeds are separated by the process called binning. The fibers are made into thread and woven. Okay, very good. Okay, very good, Varsha. Next, uh, going to Anubhav Sombok. The life cycle of a mulberry silicone completes in 45 to 55 days consists of stages egg, lava, pupa, and moth. Egg stage is uh, lasting from 9 to 10 days. Uh, mother stage is 24 to 28 days, pupa, nitrogen, and days. Okay, fine. Uh, name to synthetic fiber, activate it, and it's all right. So, how is cotton extracted? Machines called cotton. Machines called cotton. Machines called cotton. Is that what you have written? Anubhav? No, ma'am, it has a mistake. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah, change that. Um, okay, I um, remove the balls of the cotton from the stock. These machines are rotating spindles. Proceed from okay. So as uh, Varshid has mentioned, I want you to write also about ginning. So more than using like machines, you can write, but I want you to also write about hand picking because machines are not the only thing that we rely on, right? So uh, you don't use machines for first of all picking. I already I think I cleared this to you about you know tea plantation example. I don't know if it was you or someone else. So we don't use machines for picking the cotton. We only use it for gilling, maybe. For picking, it's completely done using your hands. Like in tea plantations and all, you go pick the tea leaves, right? You don't need machines to pick the leaves. Similarly, here you use only your hands. So I want you to write that additionally. All right? Okay, ma'am. Okay, now uh, going to Pitlick. Um, the first stage of a silk moth is a silk worm. First, you need um, okay, very good. Um, athletic and spend it. How is cotton? Cotton plants there a fluffy like ball known as the cotton ball, which is just a ball. And then start to focus on a spinning operators. Okay, very good, Patrick. And only Varshit had did the activity that I told. Why? What happened to Anubhav and Patrick? Why you guys didn't do it? Only Varshit did the weaving experiment and he sent it to me. Why didn't the rest of you all do it? Can I know the reasons, please? Krithik and Anubhav, I want answers, please. Class, you know that I don't scold you all, right? You just give me a reason that's enough for me. Tell me why you guys didn't do it. Krithik, come back. What's your excuse, Krithik? Uh, Mama, did those two questions, right? Why didn't you do the experiment? I told you to do the weaving experiment. Were you there last class? 
Oh, no, ma'am. I will I learn the recording session. Okay, you were in there. All right, okay, fine. What about you, Anubha? You were there, right? You and Varshit was there. Ma'am, I think that you told the hand system by picking the cotton. So, uh, can I write the machine system? No, no, no the... that's fine. Okay. The experiment that I gave you was I wanted you to do the weaving process. No, the weaving process with the help of paper. Did I give you that experiment? Did I gave you guys that experiment, right? Yes, ma'am. Then why did you do that? Because I'm confused, I'm just asking, was the homework given to y'all to do the weaving experiment? Did I give you a homework about a weaving experiment? Yes, ma'am. Okay, why didn't you do it? And above. I get I get annoyed, I get angry only when you guys don't talk. Now Prithvik told you he was not present, okay. And then scold him because he told he saw the recording. Even by looking at the recording, he could have done the experiment. But it's fine. Just tell me why you didn't do it. You forgot. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Why can't you just open your mouth and say that? Okay, next time try to do it. Okay. Uh, all right. Going back to the class, we look now. We're going to see about the last part of fiber to fabric. Okay, Leshita, you can just look at my old lecturings and uh, you can uh, like catch up. Okay, so since I'm taking a new topic now, you will probably understand it's nothing um, out of topic. I'll show you the screen, guys. I hope my screen is visible to all of you all. Yes, ma'am. Okay. See, this is the experiment that I gave you all, and only one person in the class did it. All right. So, the last part of what we're going to learn is hmm, we learned about. Yarn to fiber. Just a minute, class. I'm confused with what? Because two lessons, both of you are learning the same. Okay, this is what you guys have been learning. We just started with fiber to fabric, no? Okay, okay. Yes, so, okay, okay, fine, fine. I've been uh, confused with sixth grade because I'm taking the same class for sixth grade. Okay, so we saw about wool in our last class and we saw what are the examples and everything. All right, now we're going to see about animals. What is the meaning of yield? Can any of you tell me? What is the meaning of this word? What is the meaning of yield? Ma'am, is it farming of the wool? Mm, not exactly farming, but um, the trade. 
producing exactly so yield means producing okay so now we're going to see what are the animals that produce wool for you okay so several breeds of sheep they are found in different parts of the country however the fleece of the sheep is not like the only source which we much very much know we know what are the other animals what are the other animals other than sheep we get wool from ma'am yak yak very good then from some types of mountain goats very good some type of goats okay so these are like many other sources that we get wool from okay sometimes they even take wool from rabbits also wild rabbits also they take wool from okay so how this fleece of sheep is not the only source of wool though wool com is commonly available in the market it that is normally sheep wool okay so wool is common so where and all you can find them most of the time you can find them in ladakh of india and you can also find in tibet you can find them in jammu and kashmir so these are the some of the places where you can find them in okay so wool is also obtained from goat hair so under like in kashmiri goat and all you know they have very soft hair which is used for as wool so it is woven into shawls and all so there is a shawl called is a product that you get so normally the products are used for winter right winter products is what you get from these wools right you won't you wear wool for summer so an example of one of the winter product is pashmina shawls you would have uh, seen them maybe you can even maybe one of your one of your mothers will also have it you can ask your mom what is pashmina shawl i'll show you the image of it See these are called pashmina shawls. Can you see the thick shawls? They're very very thick shawls. Okay, so these are normally the shawls that you like get from these kind of goats. All right. So pashmina shawl, where particularly you get from is you get from the goats that's in Jammu and Kashmir. why only them because they have soft hair all right under the fur all right so these are some of the few examples of the wool yielding animals so now we're going to see how now we very much know that the fiber of the cotton is obtained from the cotton ball so fiber is spun into cotton threads similarly for jute the fiber is obtained from the stem so now we are going to see what is the fiber or how is the fiber obtained from the wool okay so for obtaining wool what the sheep sheep are done is they are reared okay sheep or any other animal okay that produces a wool they are first reared now what is the meaning of reared mom not uh, mostly for not very no, no no that is a rare this is a rare two different words they are homophones what is the meaning of this mm, i'm making cutting their hair exactly you're going to like shave or cut their hair okay so shaving or cutting is called rearing okay so the hair is cut and then it is processed into wool okay so the hair here is the raw source what is the raw source of cotton cotton ball what is the raw source of jute non jute stuff 
gojot stem exactly so here the raw source is the hair okay from hair only they will make the they'll get the fiber and then which they will process it into wool okay so now we're going to see how is this whole rearing and the breeding of sheep and all is done okay so if you go to like jammu and kashmir or any you know very cold regions in himachal pradesh or be uttarakhand or the you know sikkim arunachal pradesh or be punjab gujarat in those regions and all you can see there's a lot of like shepherds okay you know who's a shepherd who's a shepherd who is a shepherd mom who uh, watches after all the sheep exactly so the people who watch after the sheep or grow their cattle or lead their cattle are called as shepherds okay so what these shepherds do is they just let they just take their herds of sheep okay take their group of sheep so the group of sheep is called herd okay so sheep basically herd okay so they take their herd of sheep for grazing okay so this herd is taken for grazing another new word what is grazing ma'am feeding on um, feeding on grass very good so feeding of grass okay so just they just let them graze on the grass regions and all okay so you know that sheep are herbivores and obviously they will eat grass and leaves so apart from grazing you know grazing them and then uh, rearing is also done and then uh, apart from grazing sheep rearers also feed them on a mixture of pulses so grazing it means only grass okay grazing means grass eating grass okay so additional in additional to this they also feed them with pulses then uh, you know uh, corn um oil cakes oil cakes are nothing but uh, Yeah, oil cakes are nothing but this is you know, uh, you know oil seeds from oil seeds they take the oil, no? So there will be some left out residue or material that is only oil cakes. Okay, so they give uh, pulses, corn, oil cakes, jowar. Jowar is like one of the crop yield. Okay, jowar like barley and all that. Okay, so and uh, also they provide them with minerals. Okay, so you know that if they give all these healthy items only, you will get a healthy wool. Similar to mulberry leaves, you know, if you feed the silk comes mulberry leaves only, you get proper silk, healthy silk. Okay. Similarly, if you feed these only, you will get a healthy wool. All right. So, what happens after you feed all of them? In winter, sheep are kept indoor, and then they feed on the leaves, grains, and all that. Okay. So, summer they let them out, and they let them graze, like you know, grazing. Grazing can be done only during summer. Okay. In winter, normally they are locked up. Okay, so they are normally locked up, and then uh, the, all the stored food, all the stored leaves, grains, and all they make them eat. Okay, so sheep are reared in many part of the country for wool. Okay, so um, the quality, the texture of all the fiber that you get from them is also depends completely on the food that they eat. Okay, some breeds, you know that you know what is the meaning of breed, right? What is the meaning of breed? some breeds what is the meaning of breed new student i'm still getting used to your name can you try what is the meaning of breed i want you also to interact with the rest of the guys hello class I'll fall asleep if I am only answering and teaching. I literally fall asleep. Please keep me active. Keep answering. Man. What is it? No breed. Tell me. Tell me. I'm making uh, the animals one or the pet uh, like. Uh, okay. Tell me. Tell me more. Tell me more. Mom. 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 I. Mom. I guarding animal. which takes okay have you heard different breeds of dogs yes ma'am german yes, shepherd german shepherd chihuahua rajapaliam 
Pomeranian. There are so many breeds. What is the meaning of this breed? Ma'am, Ma'am type. I think types of dogs. Types, exactly. That is what I want. So breed is completely depending on your type, depending on the genetics. On the gene, they will have different different qualities. Okay, but you know how a German Shepherd is, how majestic, how big, how you know scary and uh, you know wild it looks. But at the same time, look at a Pomeranian. Looks so tiny and fluffy and cute. Okay, so you can see the complete drastic. But they both are dogs. But the breed is different. Similarly, there are different breeds for sheep also. Depending on the breed, their characteristics, their looks and appearances, everything will change. Okay, so some breeds of sheep they have some thick coat of hair on their body, which will give you a good quality and large quantity of wool. Whereas some will have, you know, will have very little amount of coat like wool, and they'll provide very little amount of uh, quality wool. Okay, so uh, these kind of they will not just randomly take any sheep. They will not like not care about. A uh, good quality, a bad quality. Ah, okay. I have a sheep. I don't care. I just want wool. That's not what they do. They only take the sheep's of good quality and healthy sheep's because they want healthy wool. Okay, so they choose the breeding depending on which one will have thick coat of hair. So they can have a good quality of wool. so selecting particularly selecting the uh, you know um, the breed depending on what kind of quality or what kind of wool you want is known as selective breeding or selective bred so what they will do is they'll breed the animals depending on the quality they want obviously if they feed all this properly you will get a healthy sheep if they don't feed all this you will get a weak sheep so they will grow in in a proper temperature proper guidance proper feeding to selectively get these characteristics do you understand yes okay so this is known as selective breeding all right so they are selectively bred all right so once the red sheep have been developed a thick growth of hair hair is then shaved off for getting wool that shaving is nothing but rearing of wool all right am i clear you can note it down take notes and ask me if you have any doubt
Okay, once everyone's complete, please tell your name and tell me if you're done. No, Varshit complete. Okay. Ma'am, done. Ma'am, I'm no problem. Okay, what about Krithvik and Shivagal? Krithvik, you're done? Oh, ma'am, almost. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. What about the new girl? Are you done? No, ma'am. No. Okay, take your time. Tell me if you're done. Mm. All right, we're going back to our lesson. Now we're going to see the step by step how is this whole process done. Okay, so one of your questions will be. This will be one of your homework. How is rearing of sheep done? I don't want you to just simply write like a the best one is like uh, bread is selected and then this hair is cut off. I don't want the same story that I told in class. I want you to Google, understand it, and I want you to write it in your own words. All right. Okay. So now we're going to see how the processing is done. Now we saw already fiber to wool, how it we get basically. So the fiber here, the raw material is hair. Now also we saw. So this is how fiber to wool we get. Now we're going to see how the processing is done. Now, similar to cotton example, I'm telling. You have collected all the cotton. You have done all the ginning. Okay, but now how will you process it? How will you stitch it? Okay, so step by step, I'll uh, note it down. So just listen carefully. So first step. What you do is the fleece of the sheep. You know what is the fleece? Said what is the fleece? From the hairs of the sheep. From the hair. Hair exactly. So the fleece of the sheep, along with the thin layer of the skin. So fleece plus thin skin layer. Both of them is removed from the body. From the body. 
okay this process of removing the thin layer of skin along with the fleece is known as shearing s h e a r i n g shearing okay so machines and all sometimes are used okay so machines similar to those that is used by barbers so what do the barbers do they have trimmers right to shave your hair they have trimmers and scissors no similarly here they have trimmers to trim the hair and remove the hair of the wool okay by the barbers they are used to shave off hair usually hair is removed during the hot so no, normally when does this shearing occur during hot season normally it occurs at the season doesn't mean that you shouldn't do in winter but normally it occurs during the hot season okay why they why are they doing it in the hot season because it will enable the sheep to survive without the protective coat layer because in the winter if they remove why is the what is the whole purpose of the uh, furry hair why aren't our street dogs street dogs in our near our neighborhood why are they not more fluffy but why are the dogs in cold regions very fluffy tell me why ma'am to make them feel hot ma'am to keep mm, them warm to basically to keep them warm yeah so if you remove their skin and their wool during the winter they will die right they won't be able to survive that is why they doing it in the hot season all right so the hair provide wool and fibers okay this hair only will provide you with wool and fiber okay so wool and fiber so this from this fleece you getting woolen fiber all right so this woolen fiber is then processed and they are converted into woolen yarn all right so shearing will not hurt the sheep because it is removing for example you taking a cat you just cutting its uh, you know fur does that hurt the cat no it's just a hair you they cut your hair does it hurt for you no it's just a part of your body it's just a hair it's a dead cell similarly shearing does not hurt the sheep just as it does not hurt when you get a haircut okay so the upper most layer of the skin then you can ask why they are removing skin then that should hurt no but it will not because the upper most skin of these animals they are dead cells you know what is a dead cell anybody knows what is a dead cell yes or no quickly mom uh, a cell which doesn't work and move mom it doesn't have the hemoglobin okay right very good okay any else of anybody else of you can you give me examples of dead cells in your body is there dead cells in your body now Yes or no? Are the dead cells in our body now? Yes, ma'am. Where? Yeah. Any part? Can you tell tell me any part of our body which is useless now? Ma'am, hair is useless. Hair, exactly. So hair, you know, doesn't do any function. It's just stuck to your head, right? Even nails. What does the nails do? Nothing. so your nails and your hair are the only dead cells in your body the more they grow you just keep cutting them okay similarly the first layer of the skin and the fleece of the sheep or goat or any other wool bearing you know animals they are cells that are dead so the hair of the sheep once you shave it it will grow again just like how your hair will grow okay so na another step is second step is after the skin everything is shed along with the hair and what they will do is they'll completely wash it okay for removing all the dust dirt and all that okay so washing of skin and fleece okay how they will do this they how they do this inside tanks they'll put them inside tanks and then they'll clean it okay so your question is mm -hmm. before that wait this process of cleaning them inside tanks is known as scouring 
Now your question is, why is scoring required? Okay, so this scoring is done. I've already told you, I'll not repeat again. Find your answer, okay? So nowadays they do scoring with the help of machines. Okay, they do it in tanks or they do it in, um, you know, big, big machines are there for doing the scoring. Okay, so this is your second step. We will look at the remaining steps. We all have almost like uh, six steps totally. Yeah, so we look at that in next class. You can note your homework. Yeah, you can note your homework and you can make the notes and tell me when you're done. Any of you had any doubt? No, ma'am. Make note of it. Make note of your homework. And I don't want this time any excuse. All of you all should do your homework and show it to me. Done, ma'am. Okay. Done, ma'am. Okay. What about the remaining two? I'm done. I'm done. Okay, very good. All right, so just three questions for your homework. Did you guys have any doubt? No, no. It's all clear, no, no. right? No. All right. Fine, then I'll see you guys in the next class. Bye. Bye, no, no. Bye, no, no. bye. Bye, bye.